It's harvest time here at the onion bed. So come on, garden with me. Hey everyone, how's it going? And welcome back to what is going to be a whole new part of the channel. I really love making dedicated episodes about specific things and sharing that with you. But what I don't do that often is just really just share a bit of time in the garden. And that's where these new episodes are going to come in. They're going to be called Garden With Me. And the clue is in the name. We're going to spend a little bit of time together just doing a bit of gardening, having a chat so that I can show you what's happening in the garden, what's happening with me, the successes and the failures, and we're just going to enjoy at the same time. And we are at the onion bed. And really, I had planned on just doing this by myself, digging up the onions, the garlic and the shallots that I'd planted here. And I got started, I really just got started and thought, this is the perfect episode. So let me show you exactly what I've got. Back in the late autumn, I planted three things in this bed. Overwintering onions, garlic, and behind those, shallots. And I've been looking after them over the months. And now when it comes to those kind of things, it's the time to harvest them. And actually, I suppose really the time to harvest them would have been maybe about two or three weeks ago. It's early July at the moment. The big thing, though, is that regardless of the date, there are things that you're looking for. With onions, what you're looking for is exactly this. It might look like a little bit of a wasteland, but this is a good sign. Over the months, you'll see that the onions are building up and up and up, and they're doing nicely, which is what you want. But the green growth will be upright, a bit like this, except this one has bolted. And then eventually what will happen is the growth will flop over. And when you see it flopping over, when it comes to onions, that is your sign to start digging them up. Oh, what? <laughs> it started raining. So I'm going to stay true to my word. We're just going to keep gardening. We're going to keep gardening in the weather and we'll see how we get on. So as you can see, most of these has, have flopped over and actually they've been flopped over for a couple of weeks. Ideally, I should have lifted them a little bit sooner, but I'm going to get them done now. And what I do when it comes to lifting onions is you can just pull them out of the ground. But the big thing is you want to protect the basal plate, which sits at the bottom of the onion. And for that, I get a hori hori or a trowel, something similar, and just push it under and lift it. Just helps to lift that onion out of the ground. And there you go. Oh, OK. I know I said I was going to film, but I need to stop. I need to stop. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow, that ended up being one heck of a rain char. I thought that was only going to take a couple of minutes to pass. It's rained for about 20 minutes. And my trug is soaked. The garlic that I've already lifted in it is soaked. And I was about to say that the ideal day to lift your onions is a day when you know that it's going to be dry. And better yet, if you know that you're going to have a dry spell, it means that you can lift your onions and you can leave them on the surface of the soil to dry. Well, as you can see, that has not exactly happened. So, as I was saying, when I was lifting the first onion, what you want to do is lift it quite carefully, really, so that you protect the roots and particularly where the roots join the base of the bulb. The reason for that is that this basal plate joins essentially all of the layers inside the onion. And if you damage that, it's more likely to rot off quicker and it means it's going to store better. So once you've lifted your onion, then it's a case of leaving them, well, really somewhere to dry out. If you don't have changeable wet seasonal conditions like we do here in Ireland, you can leave them on the soil very happily for a few days and you'll know that they're ready because the outer skins, whereas at the moment they're quite, well, they're quite fresh, they're going to start to dry up and you'll recognise that papery outer skin that you would get in an onion that you would buy in the supermarket. And at that point, they're ready to go. 
Instead, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to have to lift all of these and put these on the staging in the greenhouse to dry out instead. But that's all right. I'm going to keep going with this, keep lifting the onions and see how I get on. But what's brilliant about this is actually quite how good this harvest has been. I've planted maybe about 30 or 40 onions. This is a very basic overwintering onion that I planted in the late autumn. I think it's radar. Um, and look at the size of some of the onions. I'm really pleased. And better yet, last year almost all of my onions bolted and that meant that, well, I was a bit disappointed and only one has bolted. So here's the thing. If you've got onions that have bolted, which is going to flower, the reason for that generally is that they've been hit with either too long a dry period or too hot a period or a combination of both and that means that it shoots up this flower spike. If that happens, let me show you, if it happens you can continue to use the plant. The big thing is that there's actually nothing wrong with the plant itself. There's certainly nothing wrong with the onion. The difference is though that you'll find that when you cut it it's going to have like a hollow stem in the middle and they don't store as well. So what I'll do is I'll preferentially use this onion in my cooking really soon. And I have found that although they don't store as well, it doesn't mean that they don't store at all. It just means they don't store as long. But this is a really nice harvest and I'm so happy. But let's have a quick look at the garlic. Onto the garlic next. And as you can see, I've already got stuck into that and it's going really well. When you plant garlic, if you haven't planted garlic before, the, the old fashioned way of knowing when to plant and when to harvest is that you plant it on the shortest day of the year and then you harvest it on the longest day of the year. In my case, I just really plan to plant it late autumn, early winter time, let it overwinter. And then the easy way to know when your garlic is actually ready, as opposed to simply going with what the longest day of the year is, is to count up the leaves of the plant and look for once half of those have started to either yellow or have actually died back, then you know that you can lift them. And I lift them exactly the same as the onion, going just underneath with a hori hori first and then pulling out the plant like this, complete with a weed. <laughs> and that way I know that I'm not going to do damage. Just like an onion, you don't want to damage the basal plate. And there you go, look, check that out. Look, that is a proper fat garlic bulb. I've got some other really good ones here. Check that out. I am so happy. So this is a pink garlic uh, called Pink Germador. A really easy one to get hold of and I find that it's really reliable. I've grown it the last few years. Again, like the onions, I'm going to leave it somewhere to dry. Not outside because that's not really going to work now. And um, let them dry and then I can store them indoors. But I've got a nice harvest of garlic as well. What have I got? I've probably got about, again, about 25 30 plants which is going to be more than enough than i can use and then finally i want to show you my shallots this bed has been properly productive between the onions the garlic and the shallots here and it's nice because the things that i'm harvesting i know that not only can i enjoy them fresh i can enjoy them through the rest of the year if you're not familiar with a shallot a shallot is basically just like a bunching onion um, and you would plant a set in the late autumn, winter time, just like an onion, except rather than forming one big bulb, they form a cluster of bulbs. And check it out, there is a cluster. And they sit in the winter not doing an awful lot. They'll have a few little green, green leaves. And then come spring, they really take off. And what you get is a big bushy growth of green onion-like leaves. And again, just like the onions, you wait until they go. And when they fall over, it's time to lift them and you can then have a look and see what you've got. It's like digging buried treasure. And ideally what you want are you want nice shallots that are going to be a decent size, something like that. That's really good. But the main thing again, just with any other onion, protect the basal plate, protect the roots at this stage and make sure that you dry them out a little bit. This I think this might be a little bit mixed in terms of results. I'm noticing that quite a lot of these have a kind of white rot and onion white rot is never good. Um, and they, they smell very oniony. What I tend to think has happened here 
is rather than them necessarily having onion white rot, is that I've left them too long. The foliage died back sooner than the onions and the garlic, and I thought I could get away with leaving them. And I think I've done the wrong thing. Let's have another look at a different clump. We're going to try this clump now. Yeah. Oh dear. I think we may have a fail because... Yes, we have a nice little clump. That's really good. But let's see if I can get this into focus for you. They're not looking great. They're a wee bit squishy. Ah, dear. Okay. Well, as with anything in productive gardening, there's always something to be gained. Oh, no, look. Oh, it's literally all white and yucky. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lift these anyway. I'm going to let them dry out. I'm going to go through them and see if there's anything that can be kept, anything that's half decent. It's not the end of the world. I've never had much luck with shallots. Okay, next year is going to be my shallot year. But let's face it, I've got the garlic, I've got the onions. It's all good. Now all I need to do is keep working away and harvesting more. The shallots may not have been one of my greater successes this year. We're going to tuck those over there. We're not going to talk about them anymore. But the garlic is looking really good. The onions are properly beefy. Look at that. I'm really pleased about that. And I think it's fair to chalk this bed up as a success. So I am going to continue dodging the showers. I'm going to keep harvesting all of these things so that I can get them dried and stored so that they don't keep rotting in this damp weather. And hopefully you enjoyed just spending a bit of time gardening with me. And until next time, see you later.